Hey GED students, square, square root, what's the difference? When do we know which one we're doing? Well, this problem here is going to help us clarify that at a little more experienced of a level. So let's take a look. First one says, what is 90 squared? What is 90 squared? I feel like this one's pretty straightforward. You know, we learned that when we say square, we are talking about the second power. So if I say 90 squared, I'm talking about 90 raised to the second power. And if I say, what is that? I'm kind of prompting you there with an equal sign, like I'm telling you to simplify. All right. So now avoid the most common student error, which is just to multiply the two and the 90 and tell me that's 180. Not true at all. Remember, that is not what squaring means. Squaring means taking a number and multiplying by itself. Kind of like finding the area of a square, all right? Like if I was to find the area of a square that was 90 feet by 90 feet, I would multiply those two numbers, 90 times 90. So same thing here. Now, you can do your side work, okay? You can line it up here, go 90 times 90 and start putting all these zeros down on your paper. But what I find is that students tend to make a lot of errors when they do that. My favorite way to multiply with these round numbers, these numbers with zeros on their butts, as I often say, is just to multiply the non-zero numbers. So nine times nine is 81. We know our perfect squares. And then to remember that when we multiply, zeros accumulate. So one, two trailing zeros in our problem, then we'll have one, two trailing zeros in our answer. That should remind you of multiplying with decimals because it's the same idea. Those zeros are holding my decimal place. They're pushing my eight and my one out to a different place value, right? Of course, what the heck is Kate talking about? 81 is different from 8100. That's what I'm saying. Those zeros push that eight and that one out to make them have a different value. But anyway, you don't need to know any of that to understand that 90 times 90 is 8100. Feel free to do the side work with all the zeros if it really pleases you. That being said, though, that idea of those trailing zeros can help us to understand the next problem. Now, wording's a little different here. Look at what it says. What number? Right away, we're starting with a mystery. We're saying what number multiplied by itself, not by two now, by itself, by the same number is... 1600. What number multiplied by itself is 1600? And you might say, I have no idea, Kate. I don't know my times tables that far. No, but remember that idea of ignoring those trailing zeros and just looking at that. We know 16 is a perfect square of four. So I'm going to guess it's four something times four something would give me 1600. Well, remember that zeros accumulated when we multiplied. So if we have two zeros here, there would have to be two zeros in the problem. And so, of course, what number multiplied by itself is 1600? It'd be 40. Now, I'm really good at this because I've been doing this, you know, I don't even know for how many years. Plus, I wrote the worksheets. That really helps you guys. <laughs> so if you are a struggler, I wouldn't just guess, like say, oh, I think it's 40, or oh, I think it's four, or, oh, I think it's 400. I would guess and check. I would come here and I would do the multiplication to indeed make sure that I was right. And 40 times 40, yes, is, oh my gosh, I hate doing this, I'm so resentful. Uh, but yes, 1600. <laughs> All right, so next example. What is four to the second power? Again, I'm saying, Four to the second power, what is it? Oh, that one's easier. Of course, uh, four to the second power is not eight. It's not eight. It's not eight. It's not eight, you guys, please. It's not the same as four times two. <laughs> it's the same as four times itself. Four times four is 16. Um, flip now to the next one. It says, what is the square root of 4,900, the square root. Remember the square root symbol is just that plain old radical, that little check mark house with no number in the check mark. Okay, no number there. Right inside that check mark. Okay, so I'm asking what is the square root of 49? Of course, I'm prompting you with that what is language, so it makes sense to simplify if I can. Um, 
And so, look, same idea. If I say, what is the square root of 4,900? I'm, it's the exact same idea of this phrasing here. I'm asking myself, what number squared equals 4,900? Or another way of thinking of it, what number times itself equals 4,900? When you get stuck on square roots, that's the language you need to prompt yourself. What number squared equals 4,900? And of course, we see that same idea. We know this that uh, 49 is a perfect square of 7, so it must have something to do with 7s. And again, it's going to be 70 if I want those two zeros on the back side, right? So 70 times 70 is 4,900. Therefore, the square root of 4,900, if I'm getting back to the root, what it's made of, that's 70. Woo! We're doing hard work here. And I'm like kind of out of space for doing such hard work. <laughs> Let's see if I can squeeze this next one in. It says, what is 16 multiplied by itself? 16 times itself. Of course, that's just another way of saying what is 16 squared. And um, if you don't have it memorized, which you probably don't, and we this isn't a round number with the zeros, so no tricks for me. I've got to just multiply, so let's see. 6 times 6 is 36. Carry the 3. 6 times 1 is 6, 7, 8, 9. And then I'm not really multiplying with a 1 now. I'm multiplying with a 10, so I'm going to slap a 0 on the back side. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 1 is 1. Add up what I got from multiplying by 6 with what I got from multiplying by 10, and I get 6, 5, so I told you I was out of space, 256. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.